I was in my final year and studying my master's course at the National Film and Television School, just before it started. Uh, I graduated in February, thank God. And then two weeks later, we're all in lockdown. And I've been working at this supermarket whilst I was studying and I'm suddenly become a key worker and I'm thinking, gosh, this is interesting. And I think my experience here taught me that you can't judge anybody's journey. You know, there are people who work here for different reasons, but there's this perception that people who work in shops are low skilled and people do actually speak down to you. So my experience of working in here, and maybe it's the brand, but it's that customers are very much entitled at times, you know, they, they can be rude, they can be aggressive, they talk down to you assuming that there's a lack of intelligence. That's probably why we're working in a shop, you know, stacking shelves, but there's so much more to the role. Lockdown happened and obviously we have no choice but to go to work. I couldn't be furloughed and if I don't go to work, I won't be paid because number one, I don't have an underlying health condition. I'm not in a high risk category. I don't live with people who are high risk or have underlying health conditions. So I don't qualify to elect myself out. I have to go in. I work weekends, so my job is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So suddenly everything is a standstill. And funnily enough, I, I loved it. It was quiet. I was the only person on public transport. At times, it was just me and the bus driver, you know, just driving through London. A bus journey that would usually take an hour, you know, now took 20 minutes, 30 minutes to get to work. There were less people on the roads. It was just lovely. I think the thing that was scary for me was that I work late. See, my shifts would be from four till 10. So coming home at 10, 10.30 was a bit scary around that time. It actually felt a bit like 3 a.m. in the morning. Nobody was around. It was kind of eerie. But going into work in the afternoon was lovely. Like, there was no cars on the road, the air felt fresh. It, it was like being in another country. Literally, you could hear the birds. You could see more of the wildlife running around, you know? Everything seemed a bit more free. But at night, it was a complete opposite. But apart from that, I loved going in. Actually being at work, that was interesting. Maybe I've been judgmental in the past as well, right, where you place judgments on people working in a certain job. And I think a lot of the customers in this supermarket place judgments on the staff like, oh gosh, you must have done really badly at school to be working here. Or is this really the only thing they can get stacking shelves? Customers would literally be like, I don't know, it's just, it's just weird. I've never worked in retail until that time, so this was my first retail experience. It was like, can you get that for me? I need this. You guys never had that. You know, it was just rude, very much entitled. And yes, this place is more expensive than most shops, so you have to pay a little bit extra. You do get additional service, but it's the rudeness. They would be a little bit brash and condescending, a little bit like, you know, assuming maybe, uh, and this is me making assumptions, but that they think English is not my first language. But then when we can speak, it's like, oh, okay, she can communicate with me. <laughs> but that was what it was like before COVID. You would have been spoken to in a certain way and there was an expectation that you must serve me because I'm paying a certain amount to be here. And you never have anything in this shop, I'm tired of this shop. And then COVID strikes and it's a case of there's panic buying. Fortunately, we had enough stock, so it didn't feel too bad. But when I went into other stores, that made me panic because their shelves were completely empty. With us, there were still a few things on the shelves, although things like pasta was the first thing to go. And you felt for old customers because that's the kind of food that older customers tend to buy, a canned food that lasts long, you know? Suddenly there was none of that left on the shelf and we were having to order more toiletries suddenly it starts disappearing. I'm having to keep toilet roll aside at work for myself because I can't find it anywhere else. You know, people literally stocking up their trolleys with gloves and face masks and everything else. But then the 
attitude towards us and myself was thank you, thank you so much for being here. I heard thank you three or four times in one transaction when there was never a thank you or acknowledgement for my service. Suddenly it's thank you so much. It was really kind of you to come in. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for being here. Literally, and I would say, I have no choice. This is my normal shift. I'm just doing my job. I'm not doing anything different to what I used to do for you, but suddenly you appreciate it more because nowhere else is open. We have to provide for you. Suddenly the attitude changes. There's a lot more appreciation for us doing the work and there's a lot more consideration for each other. Like, I think customers are nicer to each other and you suddenly realise that there's more to life. And kindness should be the currency. Of all the things you do, kindness should be at the foremost thing you do, you know? The way you conduct yourself, the way you appreciate people, you should at all times show empathy, show kindness, regardless and not judgments based on your own perceptions. So like a complete 360 has taken place and there was this sudden appreciation for us. And now we're key workers because like we have to risk our lives to come to work when actually we didn't have a choice. Like this is my only means of survival right now. How interesting is that? There was an initial panic as to like, why should I have to risk my life? Everyone else has been told to hide away, stay away, you know. Don't go to any family members, don't do this. It was really, you know, there was a lot of fear factor being put into the campaign, I think. Don't go outside your house. But if you're a key worker, you can go ahead. You expose yourself to people, it's fine. A contradiction in the message, which was like, okay, what's going on? But day to day, my feeling did change. Like I have to go back to the recordings. I, because I did these blogs, basically how I was feeling day to day. So day to day, it varied. But I, I enjoyed the fact that I still had a routine. I'm thankful that I still did have a job and I took it as a blessing instead of complaining about it. So lots of people suddenly became unemployed. One thing that struck me with this because there were so many deaths as well, is to stop procrastinating. If there's anything you can do today, just do it. Because we have so many ideas that just let it go. I'll start tomorrow, or the fair factor of not wanting to start something. One of my issues is maybe I overthink or overanalyze things, situations, instead of just doing it where if I knew the pandemic was going to happen, I would have put my business together, like suddenly, properly, in order to acquire as much content as I can for the black community, to start something online. Or to get my act together, to get that contact I needed in Netflix, and having that content piled up, ready to sell, because literally everyone was on Netflix. Everyone's online. Everyone is watching TV. You know, and I would have got myself together properly. So I guess that comes from... Actually, when you have an idea, don't sit on it for too long. Work on it. Just get it done. Because tomorrow's not promised to any of us. So do as much as you can, when you can, because everything's going to be okay. Everything is always going to be okay. And whatever you go through, once you're out of it, you realise why you went through it. It's always a blessing in the journey. You've been safe from something without you realising it. Sometimes it's best to appreciate where you are and enjoy it as opposed to, God, I want to be here or I want to be there. Actually, just enjoy the things of today. That's why I always use the word thankful because it's important to you. Because you're always in something. We overanalyze the problem instead of thinking about the solution. We overthink and become victims of it. Just see it for what it is and enjoy every day because it's a blessing and everything that you're going through, it might not be clear straight away, but when you look back, it's like, okay. Initially, I was really embarrassed to tell people that I was doing this job because I was like, oh gosh, people be thinking, what's she doing working in there? But you know, then somebody reminded me that there is dignity in work. 
Like, why should you look down or put yourself down? You're working, you're making a living for yourself. That's a good thing, regardless of whatever you're doing. What you're doing is working for you. So what should it matter? That's why I learned that. We have these perceived ideas a lot. And I think maybe I was one of those people who judge people that work in supermarkets as well. But when you talk to every other person that works there, you understand the journey and you're like, wow. And actually, the job's not that bad. <laughs> like, it can be a bit samey. You know, it's not that bad. It's physically demanding. The people getting paid less money. It's like, gosh, we work so hard and the money's not that much. Whereas someone sitting at a desk all day, typing emails. So yeah, I think what I tell my future self is, don't worry, there is a blessing in everything. Everything is gonna work out because it does.